the sharply differentiated stratified society also looms large in Ashoka's inscriptions. Ashoka is not only aware of the existence of the high Varna Brahmanas, but also he is aware of the presence of the well-to-do people along with the miserly, the poor, the weak. He is aware of the existence of slaves and servants. So, even from the cursory glance of such terms in Ashoka's edicts, one gets an image of a sharply stratified society. If we at this stage turn our attention to the description of Megasthenes about Indian society, we come across something quite unusual. In his view, Indian society was divided into seven groups. The term used by Megasthenes to denote the seven divisions is genos and meros in Greek and none of these terms can be equated with what we mean by nowadays a caste. But what are these seven groups? According to Megasthenes, philosophers, both the Brahmanas and the Shramanas, the cultivators, shepherds, knitters, hunters, the artisans and dealers, the soldiers, spies, counsellors and assessors. It is quite clear the list is quite unusual and definitely makes a departure from the usual description of the society being divided into four Varnas and many Jatis. Of these seven groups, except the philosophers, no other person could change one's profession and nobody could marry outside his own group. Now that these two restrictions, restrictions on change of profession, restrictions on Indian marriage are typical features of the Varnajati system. Did Megasthenes ultimately indicate here two features of the Indian Varnajati system? Yet his description hardly goes along with the typical Varnajati system. The other point is said that all these seven groups stand in relation to the state. Each and every group is described by Megasthenes how they are beneficial to the state and the king. If they do something beneficial for the state and the king, such group is exempted from taxes, otherwise they have to pay a taxes. This is something which makes Megasthenes' description quite distinctive and pretty unique. He did rightly observe that the largest number of Indian population were cultivators. He also made a very peculiar observation that the the sixth social group formed of spies. He also indicated that the soldiers formed the second largest group, second only to the cultivators, indicating they are by the largeness of the Mauryan army. The account of Megasthenes, however, does not very clearly suggest how this group stood in relation to one another. That is, were they arranged in a hierarchic manner from the highest group to the lowest in social esteem or they stood one by one next to the other on a horizontal system. Usually the Indian Borno divided society maintains a very sharp vertical division of the society.
Ashoka's queen, Karubaki or Charubaki, figures in one of the inscriptions. The inscription says that she was the mother of the prince Tivara. So here, Karubaki is presented more as the mother of a prince than as an independent female personality. The Mauryan society is definitely a complex society, particularly because of the fact that the Mauryan material culture, that of economic life, is also complex and has various types of economic pursuits available during that time. 